Thank you again, Shelby. This is exciting to be here at the Athens County Public Library. And again, many thanks. And we're going to do that at the beginning of every class and hopefully at the end. We are allowed to take off our masks because we are in a large room. We are all vaccinated here. And again, I know that's personal choices. But again, I'm encouraging folks to be mindful in wearing their masks if they're not vaccinated or they can't be vaccinated for certain reasons. Uh, but what we want to do is have yoga and be as uh, a part of our community as we can be. So we did a little short sequence uh, a few minutes ago on sitting and breathing. We're going to move to a few standing poses here and each 30 minute segment might review something from before, might add something totally new. Uh, we'll show some variations in different uh, sessions or classes, if you want to call them that. We might include some volunteers from other classes or library members who want to uh, participate in the activity. So I'm going to stand up, and another of my past teachers is Jean Couch, and she's written the Yoga for Runners book and the new revised edition of that. She also has the Balance Center in, I believe it's called Palo Alto, California, I think. Uh, she's amazing. She's one of the most amazing postural analysis folks I know, along with Tom Myers and Lakunda Stiles, and of course there's a few others, but uh, I really like her work, and it's all about feeling comfortable in your skin. And she has traveled the world looking at balance and posture, and modern America, and cell phones, and TVs, and all of that is certainly not help facilitate that. We sit way too long in our modern uh, world. So to stand up appropriately, you can put one foot slightly under the chair so that you can stand up and push off. You can put both feet slightly under, stand up and push off using your quads, knowing where your buttocks are going to be on the chair. I'm going to move the chair out of the way just a little bit. And that's something that I would like you to do at home is to be mindful about what's around you. Uh, very easy to trip over something. Oh, I didn't know my cell phone was there. Oh, that's an expensive item not to uh, take care of. Uh, but even in the evenings, uh, I'll just feel my way to the bathroom instead of putting on a nightlight or one of my uh, headlamps or something. And it's a good way to trip over a yoga block or a ball then you have an accident. So we're going to start by just warming up a little bit during that short interval. Remember you'd like to get your cardiovascular ability up over 70% of the maximum. Or find your maximum and then go 70%. I believe I said that backwards. And we're not going to do that to get there quite long enough, but just a little bit of action goes a long way. Then rebounding which is a pre-step to unwinding in my fascia work. Go ahead and do little heel scoops. So the toes are spread. My feet are parallel. And you'll notice that you probably have a propensity to stand in one way. My old way to stand was this, as a kid, or sway back. And yes, that led to some of my back problems. But once you do this so long, the bones get laid down that way, and to get this out of pronation takes some serious work and some fascia work. And that's how I got into fascia work through the John Barnes myofascial release training and an excellent physical therapist in Waynesville, Ohio, Jocelyn Metzger in Sunshine Therapeutics. But rebounding, what, what do you do when you're nervous? You shake, maybe. You wiggle. What do you do when you're scared? You freeze. So these are all part of our regular nervous system uh, setups. So through rebounding, and I've done a lot of Donna Eden's energy work things that she does. Almost every system of energy healing has some type of unwinding rebounding. Because through chaos, and then when you come to homostasis, your body reorganizes and you create balance. And we're here in Tadasana, mountain pose. Again, my core is gently engaged. Sometimes we call this the clamshell. There's other clamshells we'll do 
on the ground with our thighs is a very nice uh, adductor, abductor balancer. But I'm bringing up my transverse abdominis, all the muscles right in front of the pubis bone, but just gently. And the ribs down, my belly button kissing the backbone. Hands in anatomical, and I'm pulling the earth away with my feet. I am so rock solid right now, like a mountain. But there is no mountain that does any road. From all the weather, the rain, the wind, the snow, time. So we all erode too regularly. From the minute we wake up in the morning to the minute we go to bed at night, this is what begins to happen as we all of a sudden, here we are at the end of the day. <laughs> so we're going to try to counteract that, or we're going to try to at least find a way to work through that so we can always be at ease. So we're going to do um, a couple warrior series here, just standing poses, very simple. And I'm going to add the slow yoga component to this, the subtle yoga. So I'm going to start with my left foot forward, my right foot back. If you're having a balancing impaired day, <laughs> I have many, depends on what's going on. And you might find you have better balance at the end of the day than in the morning. Who knows? Everybody's different. But widen your stance. Typical Iyengar stance is we line everything up. That's pretty significant balance. Then our hip points, our iliac crests are going to be moving as far forward as possible. We're going to reach through the back foot. And again, I'm going to just change that slightly to accommodate today. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana one, and we always want to make sure the knee doesn't track in, doesn't track out, or like a heat seeking missile, try to track anywhere because that's going to create the potential for injury. But I'm going to have it try to go right over the center two toes. And that's muscle work. And that's muscle memory. So I'm going to splay the toes. I'm going to find the four points in my feet. I'm going to gently lift right now, just to inhale and exhale and get situated in my body. Reach both hands back. And inhale and just gently bend the front knee and reach up. Virabhadrasana one. Exhale. My eyes are tracking down as my hands move down stretching back. So all of these are muscle induced actions. So I'm reaching, my muscles are activated up. And exhale down. Subtle so yoga likes to add some very interesting aspects. We'll switch sides. So we'll do bilateral and down. And you would do this four or five times on each side as slow as you could go. And down. And then con lateral. Up. And down. And up. And you're looking up. So the eyes tracking really are enhancing your balance abilities. And again, both. Up. And down. Now, how are we going to do cross lateral? We're going to reach up and then down. Our hands are going to cross over our heart. Up. Inhale. And down. And each time we cross our hands to our heart, we're separating, we're crossing over the hemispheres of the brain, the white matter, the Mohawk region of the brain which stimulates the glial cells, the different memory cells of the body. And then release. Vibhadrasana 1, warrior 1. You would normally shift and do this on the other side. I'll do a quick version of that, and then we'll move into warrior 2. And then we'll move down onto the mat. So again, watch the knee, particularly if you have knee issues. Uh, you want to train that knee to move out over the first two toes. The more our knee is over the ankle forward, the less stable it is, the more chance that you might have an injury. So we try to stop it with muscular fascial action right over the ankle. And am I perfect every time? 
I wish. Nope. <laughs> but it's a goal to strive for. It's an awareness to keep in mind. So down and up. And maybe this is how you begin. Down. I'm going to add the hands. So the legs start straight. I'm stretching the hands back. Inhale, float up for your Bhadrasana one. If you have shoulder issues, do happy cactus arms. Uh, down. Uh. And now you see I just moved into the opposite <laughs> motions, and that's okay. It's all made up anyway. And up, and down, up. Happy cactus arms. Maybe your arms are just out forward because of a shoulder impingement. Maybe here, maybe straight up. And down. Do the same side, arm and leg. And you may become aware that, wow, I have a lot more balance on one side than the other. Why is that? What can I work on to strengthen, lengthen, and become more aware in how my body works? We're going to go up with both arms. This is a little faster than I would normally like to do in class, so take your time. So the core is on. The shoulders are draping down the back. I'm looking up. Pause and hold for two or three breaths if you can. I'm going to move into warrior two on this side, Virgarasana two. Inhale up. I'm just going to do the arm motions to start so you can remember those arm motions. And around. And the arm motions. Sometimes we call this the Xena pose. What would Xena do if anybody remembers Xena, warrior princess? I loved her. Inhale up. Exhale, now add the knee and the arms. You're reaching out. The back arm is as tall as the, the front arm, both at shoulders heights. It tends to drift down and it tends to drift forward. So try to feel like you're in a pane of glass. Palms up, inhale up. Exhale one more time, down. Probably just a little, so I can go a little further. We're gonna add a modified side angle here. And reach the front arm to the thigh. Back arm is up. If you need, you can have back arm on the hip. And then look up. And you are always seeking to find balance. There's no way you, you would be static here. And up. Stretch back. And down. And then just shake it out. Do a little nice side to side. So we didn't do Virabhadrasana 2 on the opposite side. Little quad work here. Squeeze in the glutes as you come up. Oh. And spin the feet forward, my mat's sticking. Float down into double leg stretch. If you need blocks for support, use your box. Try to have your weight over the center point of where the ankles come. If you have to or need to have soft knees, that's fine. Bars Vatanasana. If it's comfortable for you just to hang, hang. Fingertips can come in line with the toes. You can play with different versions of this. It's a hamstring stretch. Oh, yeah. So be safe and keep it a little soft. Do not hyperextend. If the knee's going this way, not good. Head is hanging. How to come up, a little support. Heel, toe, heel, toe, heel, toe, until you're parallel. You can soften the knees and roll up like a rag doll. That isn't great for me, 
So when I'm down from Uttanasana, standing forward bend, I like to reach back. My head comes forward so my spine is on, my core is on, and I swoop up. And that seems to work better for my lower back issues. So we went through a very small or short standing sequence of warrior one, warrior two, side angle, into Parsvatanasana, double leg stretch, and Uttanasana, standing forward bend. So I'm going to let uh, Shelby have a pause here so that we can move down to the floor onto the blankets. Thanks, Shelby.